aims of men within time are always selfish aims, for selfishness is the very root of disintegration, and therefore it is a characteristic inseparable from time. One can practically say that the more a person is thoroughly, remorselessly selfish, the more he or she lives in time. Selfishness is manifested in many different ways. It can find expression in the mere lust for personal enjoyment or in the miser's insatiable greed for gold. Men in time know only what is their own and what is not, and they love themselves in whatever is theirs. Typical men within time need no justifying ideology in order to act. Their thoroughly selfish attitude is, in all its glaring shamelessness, far more beautiful than that tendency of the tiny men to slip down the path to perdition while hanging on to some noble ends, such as liberty, equality. They know what they truly want, and they know the way to get it, and they do not care what it costs to others or to themselves. And so they act in a way as gods would act. They possess the awful splendor of the great devastating forces of nature, of the roaring sea rolling out of its bed over the land, of a lava stream burning its way through all obstacles, of the lightning that men used to worship when they still understood what is divine. Naturally, this can be said only of those men whose action exceeds by its very magnitude the limits of what is personal. It is difficult to imagine any mere seeker of physical pleasure or of individual riches attaining such a grim, godlike greatness. Real men in time are blind powers, serving unknowingly the purpose of the cosmos, the divine destroyer, time itself. Him who we adore in the great lightning, Far better their frank, brutal destructiveness for selfish ends than the silly patchwork of the ordinary, well-meaning people who try to do good in this fallen world without having the courage to strike and burn and tear. For destruction and creation are forever linked. That is why we adore the lightning as well as the sun.